So this is this is actually the screen grab from one of the views of the open energy efficiency meter, and I'll kind of I'm going to kind of go through explain in a little more detail. Um, you know, fundamentally, there's two major things we're looking at. We're we're analyzing first of all portfolios of, of buildings. This is kind of fake data, honestly, but we have this in actually real California data at this point as well. Um, and you take the portfolio of buildings, and that's really important that to know we'll get is that we're we're kind of washing out the counterfactual of you know you went on vacation and you got a hot tub. You're doing that through portfolios and saying, you know, we're going to win some, we're going to lose some. It washes out with data. It turns out that when you actually take that view, energy efficiency is very consistent. We produce really consistent yield curves. Do I know that you're going to save exactly the right amount? You're, no, I don't. But I do know that if I get enough people in a bu bucket, that they're going to perform in a very consistent way. And that's not different if I was, you know, if you're all applying for car loans, you know, I'm going to know 4.5% of your are going to fall, but I'm not going to know who it is. It doesn't actually matter. You know, and that's banking versus engineering fundamentally. And so this, this analysis is looking at a weather adjusted baseline for that portfolio that we've, that, that we've created. Um, and really all that XML data is what you use to kind of create grouping. Um, and the data we looked at in California says that, okay, home performance contractors, for example, actually produce a lot more savings than HVAC. We're not going to make a judgment call. It's not one better than the other. But we're going to group them together. We're not going to put smokers and non-smokers into the same insurance policy or all the non-smokers are going to leave and you're left with all the smokers. So we're going to create these sub-portfolios, what we call blocks. And really what we're looking at is whether normalized growth savings, so this is reduction from an individual baseline on each building, but brought into an aggregate, which is how it can, again, wash out that some wins, some lose. Um, and then a bunch of views into underwriting, because no matter, even if you're paying on performance, everybody's making an investment based on some prediction that's inherent. And so how good is that prediction is really critical in how you underwrite the project. And so that's how we break up these views. There's some other... Uh, the data we're actually working with in these analysis is, is mostly is really monthly data. We are it's much more interesting when we get smart meter data, which we have now in the system. I'm going to invite you to talk more about that uh, kind of data transfer and sort of how you know what what clicks into place when you got a new project and it's in the goes in the database and where the data comes from and all that stuff. So just just at a high level, but sort of what infrastructure you have to get this uh, integrate, integrated in one place. Those are my next slides. So we're in good shape. <laughs> Perfect. I didn't even set you up. Yet. Okay. Um, this is kind of a high level view of just the component parts. You know, again, we're not, we are looking at net savings. Okay. And the problem is actually in the utility world, is it called gross savings? I think it actually should be called net savings. But, um, the result at the meter, right? And if you think about power plants and you think about carbon emissions, it's really about what happens at the meter that ultimately matters. Um, and, and, and that's really the lens we're using. So we're taking basically project data, and that's again coming through HPXML, and HPXML 2.0 is what is in the speed database, roughly. They're coming, you know, coming into sync. Again, all this stuff is mostly working, and it's all the right direction. So we're bringing that project data that we standardize in. Um, we're bringing utility data in. We're, we're, we are in the process of integrating with Green Button Connect, and it seems to actually work. Um, there's some interesting different ways to do that as well. And, you know, and when you're actually running this kind of thing behind the utility meter, you can also get the data directly from the utility. Um, and if everyone's using the same calculation method, it does not matter that much necessarily. But we do want access to the data for a variety of reasons regardless. So we're bringing data using green buttons. Um, and then we have, uh, we, we basically have a methodology for selling weather stations. We actually, for California, went through and had cleaned and then re-released. And actually, if anybody's interested on the caltrack.org website, um, we've actually cleaned all the CB2010 data and re-released it publicly now. So everything is 100% is open source. These are some of the platforms we'll go through. And then the, the outcome, again, is for uh, for people managing portfolios. That would be a program view in kind of our current construct, but that also could be an aggregator in kind of the market construct. Uh, letting industry know how they do, so folks that do a better job to actually tell their customers, for example. Um, we want to do that in a kind of discreet way at first because nobody knows how they do. And somebody's the worst and they don't know it. Half of all contractors in the bottom 50%. Um, demand views for resource planning and procurement, and uh, and then basically actuarial views on the data that can lead towards project finance. And so those are kind of the different use cases. Um, so in terms of the component pieces, we are actually I was going to say we're the first official speed plugin, but I don't think it's actually official. But we are the first functional speed plugin at this point. So we're built on top of this standard energy efficiency data platform system that we've all been kind of involved in for so many years, frankly, uh, which is, but it's off the ground, which is this open platform. It's not a centralized system. It's a distributed system. So you can each have one. And you share, and there's some talk about who owns the data. You share the data, we trade the data. If you want to get paid from a utility as a resource, you're going to have to give some of the data. Maybe this is a, a place for uh, a B or Martha to chime in on um, 
sort of seed, uh, maybe back up and just sort of give the correction view of where we are with seed. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think that with, this is all very relevant for us and, and it is. not just for this uh, initiative that Matt's talking about, but more broadly. So maybe apologies because we have Rob, Robin coming uh, to talk later today about the details of seed. So maybe for now we'll say that um, we're all interested in this collaboration in terms of a standard database platform for energy, uh, building energy performance, and um, these have some opportunities there. I think that we'll learn there's both opportunities and limitations, but let's not, let's not characterize that now. Let's let Robin explain exactly what's going on with SEED and, and what it's being used for. And great, great. Does that make sense? Great, yeah, thanks okay. a lot. So it's used for Ben Rowell and has been involved in Robin. It's one of those. Probably now, yeah. yeah. Probably now, yeah. yeah. Uh, there, there are no panaceas, and seed is not. It's kind of be fun to talk about, like it solves all the world's problems, but it does not actually quite do that. Um, but we're also one of the, we're also part of the development process with seed. So frankly, what's great about seed is it's open source. So we took what it is, and for our use cases, we're able to make it do what we want it to do, and we'll be in the process of recommitting that code back because we're all building a system. So, for example, taking in uh, green button data and time series isn't actually functionality. That's has inherently, we built it into C, so we're going to be recommitting that code, and that's the beauty of open source. Uh, so we're able to actually extensively mark, it, it changes functionality being adapted because it's not a proprietary tool, it's not closed. Um, so we are also working with uh, PGE right now on a kind of a, one of the first integrations with Green Button Connect 2.0. Um, again, not a panacea, but it seems to actually be fairly straightforward and functional at this point. Um, we're going to be getting 15 minute electrical data and uh, this remains to be seen, but I believe they're going to be modified, so we'll be also getting actually at least a verification or an access to gas, which will be coming online in hourly increments in like September, we hope, but hopefully we'll be getting one permission to get it retroactively. Um, and so we'll be able to get these data flows. Pretty simple thing, kind of not unlike signing into something with this, you know, Facebook pops a window, you need, to, you need to have your utility password, and it works. And then we get a token and we can pull and get that data out of the utility into the speed database for analysis. The calculation methodology that we're using, which really came out of this process that Bill Penny and Rashi were very involved in, and there's a large group of stakeholders, um, which is really what's built into the open e meter. We're actually putting through an ANSI process that just got underway, a uh, joint process with ACA and BPI, which if anybody knows the history there, is kind of amazing. Um, which is the idea that we need, this is really the weights and measures we're going to all be betting on in the future, and we need a consensus process around that. And whatever modifications happen to that, that approach that we're taking will get rebuilt into the tool. Um, and by the way, the, the fundamental meter itself is actually being built as what's called an SDK. So we are attaching it to the speed database and putting an interface on it, but it's actually designed in a way that anybody can use um, within even other applications, and that's fine. So we're running what we call an MIT license, which means you can use this. You, you know, we're, we're building this stuff, but anybody can take it, put it into an app, or put it into an MMV tool, and all of a sudden, the, the real innovation is with, we look at a portfolio of buildings, and I'm, I'm out you know, retrofitting buildings, and, buying them and the CDC is making sure they're doing the right thing and EPA is potentially tracking carbon and you know oh we get the same answer in terms of savings that's really the uh, the innovation. Can you just clarify um, my belief is that the MIT license is very lenient in that it doesn't require that you um, make modifications back in, and donate them back into the, the open source project. Is that looking for other people to know yes yes okay. yes that's absolutely right. right. It's a very lenient license and that's the intention basically is that we want innovation to be built on top of this. And that's written in Python and I don't know how many tens and tens of thousands of Python developers that are in California. 